What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and you know what day it is. It is Monday so today what we are doing is we are doing another position outlook here on the channel and today we're going to be talking about in my opinion probably the strongest group that the Jaguars have on the offensive side of the ball and to end the offensive position outlooks the offensive line this should be very interesting so today what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be discussing the starters which I honestly think if these guys are starters for the whole season we might have one of the best offensive line groups in the NFL this year but we're also going to be talking about some depth some guys that are also you know the number twos and the number threes that might have to come in if somebody gets hurt because you know it's the offensive line and someone always gets hurt we're also going to do this a little bit different instead of doing each individual player and telling you what they bring to the table we're going to break it down by position so center guards tackles talk about the players that play those positions and give them all overall grades as prospects and how well i think that that position is going to bode in 2019 now, on Wednesday, another disgusting video will be dropping, and our guest on the channel for Wednesday is going to be the one and only Jagannoff. Jagannoff will be on the channel. This guy is probably the funniest Jaguar YouTuber, I'd have to say. He does get really extra with his views, and he gets really, really angry, and, you know, that's that's some fun stuff. So some real, real uh, honest, hot, hard takes from Jagannoff, and I'm really excited to have him on the channel now before we hop into this video make sure you hit that subscribe button because we are at 984 we are so close to hitting that 1k ladies and gentlemen but without further ado this is the jacksonville jaguars position outlook for the offensive line so we're going to kick things off with the center position now of course the starter is brandon linder and brandon linder is one of my favorite jaguars players mostly because of how consistent he is ever since the jaguars drafted him he's been the highest graded offensive player for the Jags, you know, in his healthy years. You know, last year he kind of got injured, banged up a little bit, didn't really have an opportunity to flex or to show, but there's a reason why when we gave him that extension, he was at the time the highest paid center in the league. It's because he played like that and he earned his keep. He's good in the run game, he's good in the pass game, and all these offensive linemen really believe in Brandon Linder. He's a leader on the field, he's a team captain overall, and you know that him and Blake Bortles are really good friends, so probably feels weird snapping the ball to a different quarterback, but hopefully they get that connection going. There's not a lot of flaws in Brandon Linder's game. You know, if this guy stays healthy, he's one of the best centers in the NFL. And he's going to be a part of one of the best offensive line groups in the NFL if everybody holds down and stays healthy healthy now the only guy that's probably going to be backing him up I would say is Tyler Shatley and Tyler Shatley is kind of an all-around offensive line guy he can play the guard position the center the tackle you know he's been that Swiss Army knife for us uh, as a backup for a really long time and Tyler Shatley you know when we were out there with our terrible groups of offensive linemen he went out there and he did good you know he was probably the brightest spot in that lineup uh, at the center position doing just fine number 69 you always know when he comes on the field because he's big number 69 now he needs to work a little bit on his pass protection but in the run game Tyler Shatley is dominant and he is a good fill-in for Brandon Linder but hopefully we don't need to see him at all very much Tyler Shatley as a prospect and as a backup dude you got to get given this guy like a solid B because he's came in there and he has done what he needed to do to help the Jaguars win you know there's some situations that you know out of his control on why the Jaguars didn't win but he held up his head his end of the bargain and for Brandon Linder, I'm going to be giving him an A. Honestly, you know, we haven't seen a lot from Andrew Norwell just yet because, you know, he was injured last year too. But this guy is pound for pound probably the best offensive lineman we have. Not saying a lot with a lot of the starters that the Jaguars have heading into 2019. But I expect a lot out of Brandon Linder. I love his game. And I expect a lot out of Tyler Shatley too if Brandon Linder does go down with an injury. Now let's talk about the guards. And there's going to be three guards we're going to be talking about in this take. We're going to be talking about... AJ Can, of course, who's a guy that I really feel like I have spent way too much time talking about. I, I don't know what it is, but I feel like every other video, AJ Can's name gets brought up. And I'm like, and like, it's been this way since like I started making YouTube videos. Like, I swear to God, we talk about AJ Can so much. Like, I feel like out of any player that the Jags have, I might have been, I might have talked about AJ Can the most. But we're going to be talking about AJ Can. Andrew Norwell 
and of course uh, Will Richardson. Will Richardson's a guy that also can play the tackle position. I mean, he was been kind of getting groomed to do that, and there was also people talking about how he could take AJ Can's spot, but I'm going to put him in here as a guard because I think he has the potential to kind of compete there. I think he has potential to earn a starting spot there at the right guard position competing with a guy like AJ Can. AJ Can hasn't done anything, in my opinion, to really warrant a automatic starting job. So Will Richardson, though, you know, he could be competing with like Jaywan Taylor for the starting right tackle spot I think it's in his best interest to be going for the guard because I think the Jags are going to be sticking with Jawan Taylor I think that that's the guy that they wanted in the first round but you know they heard a lot of things going on in the background during the draft so they kind of waited on him and they ended up getting their guy so I think that's their guy at the right tackle position if you're Will Richardson you probably want to come in and do something in order to earn a starting spot now, he has not been able to get a lot of reps last year, which was his rookie year. He didn't play. And, you know, we really don't know what he brings to the pro level just yet. But I'm saying, like, if he can play well and he could be solid, he was a pretty solid guy in college. You know, he could get this starting right guard spot over AJ Cant. And I already know a lot of you guys are just going to be mad at me because you're going to be like, oh, he's a tackle tree. We should do that. But in my opinion, I think he should switch over to guard because we really don't have a guy that's giving AJ Can that kind of competition. I think he needs it because we've just been dealing with his shitty ass ever since we drafted him and we extended him. So, you know, that's another thing to be said that Will Richardson might just be in a bad spot because, you know, they drafted their offensive tackle they wanted and they extended AJ Can. So they're obviously high on him for whatever reason. But I think that's going to be kind of the battle to watch um, heading into next year because, like I said, no one's really out there challenging AJ Can. And if he doesn't have a great training camp, they might just have to whip move Will Richardson over there. So, AJ Can, Will Richardson, done talking about them. Let's talk about the left side of the line and why it's just going to be so dope and so dominant. Because you got Brandon Linder in the center, obviously, and on the left side, you got Andrew Norwell and Cam Robinson. Cam Robinson was a guy his rookie season that looked like a franchise left tackle, at least in my opinion. He dominated, he's dirty, he's just grimy, he's down in the trenches, but we're not talking about Cam Robinson right now, we're going to be talking about Andrew Norwell. We made Andrew Norwell the highest paid guard in the NFL last offseason. Unfortunately, he did leave with some injuries, but he does bring a lot to the table. He's a former first team all pro, like this is a guy that does it all he was just unfortunately stuck with bad circumstances last year but with the team that we kind of have built around him now with Nick Foles a new running game and it seems like the passing game is going to be even better I think Andrew Norwell uh, he's going to be able to stay healthy and he's going to be able to protect Nick Foles and I think that that part of his game is going to shine it's going to shine through I'm very excited to see Andrew Norwell play next year and I'm very excited to see this whole left side of the line play next year and hopefully there's not a lot of injuries and hopefully Andrew Norwell can come in produce because we spent that guy we spent a lot of money on that guy and hopefully he can continue to be an all pro left guard for the Jacksonville Jaguars all right, now we're going to move on to the tackles. We're talking Cam Robinson. We're talking Jawan Taylor. We're talking Cedric Ogabaye. We're talking Josh Wells. And maybe we'll touch on Will Richardson a little bit. Will Richardson is eligible, basically, to play the tackle position. That's more of his natural position anyhow. So he's going to have an opportunity to compete for that. But there's a lot of tackles that are going to be competing for spots. So, like I said, it's almost more safe for him to go over to the guard side. Now let's talk about the right tackle position. J. Juan Taylor was a guy, me personally, I wasn't high on drafting in the first round. But his talent was undeniable. He's a raw prospect. And we have, like, I think our best part of our coaching staff comes from the offensive line. And you know Doug Marone is a former offensive line coach, obviously. So you know he's going to be learning, he's going to be developing, and he reminds me a lot of Cam Robinson, another guy we got in the second round that was supposed to be a first-round talent, but everybody thought was a little bit too raw, needed too much work. You look at what Cam Robinson has been able to do. His first year he dominated, played really good football, unfortunate injury the next season. But I think that's a lot uh, to say about this offensive line staff, and I think that it's going to help Jaywan Taylor produce and to be a solid starting right tackle next year. He's, of course, going to be battling with guys like Cedric Ogobaye, who I've watched some of his tape. He was terrible in Cincinnati. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I don't really want him starting, but I could see where he would because maybe, you know, the whole experience thing, maybe they want a more experienced guy out there and then maybe trot Jaywan out there later, but it doesn't seem to be like that with offensive linemen. Offensive linemen seem like if they are rookies, they are usually ready to start day one and they can go out there and compete if they're good. And I think Jaywan Taylor's one of those guys. I think he's good enough to go out there and start week one and hold his own. Will he have some miscues? 
Probably. Will he probably be the worst offensive lineman on the starting five? Maybe. You still got A.J. Can kind of holding that back from you, but... Jawan Taylor is going to be an exciting prospect next year. Very excited to see what he does as our starting right tackle next year. And, you know, him competing with guys like Cedric Ogobaye. And then Josh Wells as well. I think he's more of a left side guy, so he's going to be kind of backing up Cam Robinson. And Cam Robinson, man, I've talked about him during the guards. I've talked about him a little bit already. I'm really excited about him. I He's one of my favorite Jaguars, just like Brandon Linder, because I think he works so goddamn hard, and I think he is going to be a franchise left tackle, and he's going to hold it down. Probably the best offensive tackle we've had since Baselli. I mean, we had guys like Eugene Monroe who were really solid, but we've never really had like that guy. And I think Cam Robinson has potential to be that guy, but hopefully he doesn't get hurt because Josh Wells sitting behind him is not necessarily a reliable good option to have as your starting left tackle but cam robinson is and i'm very very excited because like i said if all five of these guys stay healthy from the center to the guards to the tackles we're gonna have a good year because we're gonna have a very solid offensive line that's gonna give nick Foles time to throw and though he might not have the best targets running around the field you give him that time somebody's gonna get open i think this offensive line can give Nick Foles that much time. You got a rejuvenated Leonard Fournette in the backfield who we really don't know what we're going to be getting out of. He's going to be exciting to watch next year. It all starts with this offensive line and that's what Jason said during our running backs podcast. It all starts with the offensive line and I couldn't agree more. This offensive line starting five could be great and hopefully they can be and they just need to stay healthy and this offensive line group is top 10 in the league. Easy. And that was my 2019 Jaguars position outlook for the offensive line. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Say it with me. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.